In this video, I show you five hacks how you can improve your radiology reports starting today. Hi, my name is Dr. Christoph Acton. I'm a musculoskeletal radiologist and I teach you MSK radiology on my YouTube channel. Now, the topic for today's video applies for all of radiology and not necessarily only to MSK. So if you really want to get ahead of the game and start increasing the quality of your reports, watch the video until the end because the best tip will follow at the end. So let's start with the very first tip and that's actually you give the video a like and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. All right, so the very first tip that we have here is using paragraphs. Now this is very paramount and it should be done more. I see still a lot of reports where you just have one big block of text and this is really not something people want to look at, actually. So don't do it. Uh, use paragraphs. And you can see here this random image here from Google search. What is the essential or the, the ideal paragraph looking like? So it has a couple of sentences only, four to six. It has a clear topic and has explanations supporting that topic, etc. And basically, you keep it very organized. And in radiology, it could look something like this. So we have the first paragraph where we describe one region or one specific tissue or one specific joint. So let's see, we have a pelvis, right? Uh, so we want to focus maybe on the bony structures first. Then we move on to the soft tissue, like the muscles, for example. Then we move on to the tendons and then we move on to the ligaments. So you basically try to structure your reports using either regions, tissue components, anatomic structures, or any other topic, if you think it makes sense, or maybe it's the way your search pattern works. So that's paragraphing. Now, along with paragraphing, here's the second tip, and that's actually subheadings. Now, you can see here in this example that the text, you don't have to be able to read the text, but it looks much less organized on that side than on that side. Now, this might not be even the ideal example because there is not a lot of space between these different subheadings, but at least it's using paragraphs and subheadings. So if I'm the referring physician and let's say I'm I just want to know what's going on with the biceps pulley. In order for me to find it here, it's going to be very hard. I have to kind of like read or skim through the whole text and I will not find the answer. Whereas here, okay, there is a subheading rotator interval. So I can just go there and read what's going on there. Or if I just want to know what's going on with the cuff tendons or rotator cuff tendons, then I have a clear sentence here, just one paragraph with the tendons. So that's all I need. While here, nobody really knows. So that's very, very important. Use paragraphs and use subheadings. Now, in the same idea is ideally use a template so you don't have to invite or come up with these paragraphs every time you have to do a new report. This is certainly advised for the more frequent joints. Let's say if you read a lot of shoulder MRIs, it's probably helpful for you to have a shoulder report template. And this could be just something like this. It doesn't have to be like a structured template, which is very complex with a lot of, you know, I don't know, like uh, blocks where you can just move stuff around. It's just enough if you have, for example, these five subheadings, and then you just dictate what you see in the corresponding area. So that's the actual template that I'm using, that I'm still using. And it's here a copy out of my best-selling book on Amazon, Speed MSK Radiology. So if you want to have all the MSK reporting templates that I'm using, then you'll find a link in the description down below. So go check it out and you can buy your copy there, either on Amazon or on my own shop. So that's the, that here. Okay. Then the fourth tip here is to actually answer the question that the referring physician has. Even if we get caught up in a like an incidental finding or in something way more obvious or even more dramatic than what the referring physician was asking for. So if we look, for example, here on this report. So let me just zoom in here. So it's just some random report here. Uh, like a makeup, it's not real. So we see we have the request here. So he's asking, so there was an accident at work, persistent pain, restricted movement. I'm not sure if you can read this. Let me zoom in. And the question actually is rotator cuff lesion, right? So we go through the structured reporting template. We have all our paragraphs. We have all our subheadings from the template so far, right? Okay. So the conclusion here, oh, there was a fra fracture, like a banquet fragment. So there was a dislocation and there was like, you know, a pill sex lesion, etc. And then there's some synovitis, etc. right? So that's all good. 
But what you really want to do is answer the question that the doctor has. And that's the rotator cuff is actually intact. That was his question. And you can see here, exclusion of rotator cuff lesion. Okay, that's fine. So we want to make sure whatever comes up here, we answer it at the end. As long as it kind of like makes sense. Sometimes the questions are kind of like stupid. But yeah, I try to give the answer here as often as I can. And this is frequently just something at the end, like, okay, can be excluded or is negative or whatever. I think you get the idea. But keep that in mind. This is a very a powerful thing because you kind of like come back to the referring position. And if he's reading your report up to this point, let's say you don't have that last sentence and he's not going to read that, right? So it's just going to read here. Okay. Bankert. Okay. Okay. He will tell you, okay, I, I knew there was a dislocation. So what's actually with the rotator cuff tendons? And then you, you don't answer it here. So you have to go up here and it's really stupid and annoying for him. But if you put it in here, then he says, ah, okay, that was my actual question. Thank you very much. And then he's all uh, happy with your report. And then we move on to the last tip that I have for you here. But before we do, I just wanted to make you aware if you like this content so far, I think I mentioned it already, give the video a like and also make sure you share it with your friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want to take things to the next level, if you really want to become a better MSK radiologist, then go and check out the link in the description down below, www.acton.org, where you, you can see what I do in the virtual MSK fellowship program. So I offer a virtual MSK fellowship program where I help other radiologists to increase confidence and speed in MSK radiology. And it's a worldwide program, fully remotely, it's uh, all fully on demand except some uh, live calls where we go through cases together in a live setting or a live video meeting. And it's really great and people are getting very, very good results. So if you really want to take up and you know uh, go to the next level in your MSK radiology reporting skills, then go check it out. And if you have any questions, just pop me a message or an email or comment in the video section or in the comment section down below this video. All right, so now let's jump right back here to the last tip and that's actually a very powerful one, that the conclusion and the signature, basically your name, should be on the same page, right? So you might be asking, what? What's going on here? But let me just uh, tell you this. So let's go back to our very initial report that I have prepared here for you guys. So, okay. Now, if you are using any radiology information system, it doesn't really matter which one. Typically, you type in your text and whatever comes out is getting printed out as a PDF, right? If you're lucky enough, you might have a, you know, kind of like a preview of your final report. If you do, check it out and you will see sometimes something like this, right? Okay, all looks nice. You used all the tips that I told you so far, but your name ends up on the last page and there's nothing else really on that page. So now what will happen is the referring physician will just read here through this and, you know, he doesn't really make this connection because he might not even look at your name. So what we want to do is we want to, sorry, we really, okay. So we, we really want to put the conclusion on the next page. So we have the conclusion and our name on the same page in close proximity. Because now at this point, if the referring physician just wants to read the report, so what he does is, okay, he goes through, okay, that's that patient, he scrolls down. Okay, conclusion, so he reads all this and there's a high chance he just glimpses down and see who is actually reporting or was reporting this study. Whereas if you have, have it the other way, like it used to be here, like this. So what's going to happen here? What do you think? So the referring physician looks, okay, okay, ah, okay, there, okay. Yeah, okay, rotator cuff intact, okay, thanks. And then he goes and he doesn't want to see you or he doesn't look down there. Now, this is my personal opinion and this is the strategy that I'm using. I'm not saying this is scientifically proven or anything, but I think it's important to have your name next to the conclusion. So you build up trust, you build up confidence uh, in your refer referring physician in your own reports. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if that's the case, that's great. And uh, let me know in the comments if you have any other tips and tricks that we can use and apply to enhance our reports starting today without necessarily having to change our uh, text per se. All right. And thanks for watching and see you next time.